Tonight on 7.30 Tasmania calls to tighten forest peace deal payouts amid allegations of rotting and waste. There has to come a day of reckoning. Um, it can't continue and ultimately it's not fair. Welcome to the program. Hello, I'm Airly Ward. Successive governments have spent almost $100 million on rescue packages to get timber contractors out of Tasmania's native forests. But some foresters who've been paid to exit Tasmania's industry are using a legal loophole to re-enter it. And allegations of widespread rorting have been referred to the Federal Police. A Senate inquiry report released this week has criticised the federal government's handling of the schemes and called for increased scrutiny on the department. It comes as another $20 million in exit payments is due to be handed out. Michael Atkin reports. Two years ago, Dennis Isles was using this machinery to harvest Tasmania's forests. Now he's using it to cut firewood. Gone from a business that turns over, that's been turning over 2.2, 2.3 million dollars a year, down to um, selling a load of firewood on the side of the road. It's a, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty sad thing. For over 30 years, Dennis lived and breathed the life of a forestry contractor. But that's over, and he's finding it hard to accept that millions worth of machinery isn't being used for its real purpose. It's an absolute waste. This, this machine in the right hands, and, and it was in the right hands, it's just incredible what, what it can do. Dennis Isles was a contractor for the former timber powerhouse guns until 2011 when it pulled out of native forests. Falling demand for wood chips, pressure from green groups and the global financial crisis had crippled the company financially. It was finished overnight. We brought the gear home and um, paid the men their what, what holiday pay or whatever that, was, that we could to, to tide them over for a short time. It was terrible, just look around here. And this isn't all of it either. The federal government created a $45 million rescue package to allow contractors to get out of native forests. In return for leaving the industry for 10 years, contractors could His exit payment of about $600,000 would help him clear substantial debts, but it hasn't come close. I still owe a lot of money, and the worst part about it is the fact that I wasn't assessed properly. I had to abide by the conditions attached with receiving that, that grant funding, and that was to leave the Australian forest industry completely for 10 years. The Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry made a major change to the criteria which significantly cut the payments Dennis Isles received. Contractors had to be working in public native forest at least 50% of the time, a decision which has cost guns contractors dearly. They often worked in private forest at the request of guns. To be paid out on, on, on only what you've done in public native forest in one year was certainly not fair. I know of some guns contractors who didn't receive a crack at it. That's not the only problem with the exit program. The federal government paid 58 contractors like Dennis Isles to exit the industry, leaving a major shortage of people left to complete existing work. Forestry Tasmania was forced to extend contracts to harvest and haul a whopping 200,000 tonnes of timber. The Gillard government was warned that would happen. We thought that it was going to create a huge problem on the supply side. 
because uh, the industry was going through some tough times and the exit package was a way out. The Australian government uh, didn't listen to the advice that we gave them. Nick Bonetto is hoping the federal government will pay more attention to him. With it. Well, there has to come a day of reckoning. Um, we can't continue and ultimately it's not fair. 7.30 has been given a confidential letter by Nick Bonetto and other contractors that was provided to the Senate inquiry. It details allegations that up to 20 contractors have inflated claims to maximise payouts, have re-entered the native forest industry and traded with companies which were insolvent at the time they received exit payments. This operator from the northwest of Tasmania was paid a large amount to exit the industry. David Scott received $1.9 million to stop carting native timber, but the Scott family continues to do just that. 730 has discovered that in January a new business by the name of DTS Transport was created with the sole director listed as David's 19-year-old son, Dylan. The only thing that's changed is the writing on the door and I don't think that's transparent. This total card shuffle is, is um, it, it, it just leaves a sour taste in your mouth. There's a major legal loophole in the forestry contractor exit program. A recipient can legally pass on their machinery and trucks to a family member under a new business name and operate from the same site. David Scott's son has also taken over another family business, Langan Investments, from which Scott himself only resigned as a director in April. We found David on the side of the Bass Highway cleaning up an accident by one of his son's log trucks. Why did you change the name to DTS Transport into your son's name? That's, that's my, my business decision. He's 19, isn't he? How can he afford to run all these trucks? What's Adrian doing? He's borrowed the money. Without any financial assistance from you? Exactly right. And who's he working in native forests for? I just can't enough other contractors. David Scott maintains he's done nothing wrong. So you have no involvement in the business anymore? No. Then why are you here? I mean, this is a, a DTS transport I truck, your son's for, truck. I work for the, for the business. I'm just a worker. Isn't that hard to believe that you received $1.9 million from the taxpayer and here you are working on a DTS transport job? I've got to have, I've got to have income somewhere. I've got to work for somebody. Director of the Australian Forest Contractors Association, Ken Paget, doesn't see anything wrong with contractors passing on their businesses to family members. Why should I, because I've made a decision to do something, why should I preclude my sons, for instance, from working in the industry? I, I, I think that's a stupid situation to be in. I certainly don't want a scenario where we're just wasting taxpayers' money, we're not getting the outcome we want, which is the restructure of the industry, not just another cash injection to refinance and get going again. Former Guns contractor Dennis Isles hasn't been able to continue on. He has been raiding his retirement savings just to stay afloat. At this sale yard in Hobart, Dennis Isles has been trying to find a buyer for his half a million dollar excavator without any luck. People just shy away when they, I think, when the, when the price is mentioned. It's just too much money for them. Do you think you might get to a situation where you're under so much financial pressure that you may have to explore other options where you're using this kind of piece of machinery? Possibly put the machinery, trucks and machinery, into possibly um, maybe another family member's name. 